There are many features and functions to love about the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K, the new full-frame camera from Blackmagic. Now, I wouldn't say that these are necessarily hacks. There are features that they certainly advertise, they don't hide them, but these are features I don't hear talked about a lot, especially when it comes to this particular camera. First feature is the high ISO to low noise ratio. Take a look at this footage shot at an ISO of 8,000. This is not an ideal situation to shoot in. I'm just using the natural street lights. Taking a look at the source file, yes, there's noise on there, shooting at a high ISO like that, obviously. Now the lens I was using had a stop of T2.9, so it's not necessarily a fast lens. But take a look at just using a tiny little bit of denoising in post and what it does to that image. Because this shoots in B-Raw, we're able to work with shadows a little bit better than we are in other formats. Now this certainly is not as good as the Sony cameras when it comes to shooting in low light. Just know that you can push this camera's ISO. It's doable. You might need to be prepared to do a little bit of work in post. Next up is one of my new favorites, and that is the automatic anamorphic de-squeeze. Full frame camera from Blackmagic shoots in open gate, which means it's perfect for shooting in anamorphic. But take a look at how easy this is to do on this camera. So you go into your monitor, go under the monitor setting. Because it is recognizing the electronics of this lens, it knows that it has a 1.6 squeeze factor. So when I select anamorphic de-squeeze, not only does it de-squeeze the image in my monitor, but the file that I record creates a de-squeezed file. Let me repeat that. If you de-squeeze on the monitor, not only does it de-squeeze the image you're viewing in your monitor, it creates a de-squeezed file that's ready to go, already set, nothing you have to do in post. I love that. That's so, it's such a time saver, especially if you're gonna be shooting in different squeeze factors, if you're going to be mixing anamorphic with spherical lenses. There's another feature that also isn't talked about a lot, and that is the automatic white balance. And it's not perfect, but it has saved me in scenarios where I'm shooting outside and we're going from cloudy to sunny. It is key to understand those numbers. But sometimes you're in a pinch and it's, especially when you're outside and it's sunny one minute, then it's cloudy the next. It's not, it's not always perfect. Uh, I've, you know, it's, it's something that you do want to pay attention to the number that it's dialing in. But sometimes it dials in such a specific number and I think the combination of using that with your false color guides is going to help you get good exposure, good color balance, and it's just handy to have. But once again, it's also important to understand what those color temperature numbers are. Because this camera only shoots in B-RAW, if your custom white balance is off a little bit, you can go into the camera raw settings and change the temperature. Another great feature is being able to fix rolling shutter. This applies to the Pocket 6K Pro, providing that you're shooting in B-Raw. These cameras are known for having pretty bad rolling shutter. So if you're going handheld, or even if you're on sticks and you're doing whip pans, you can get this jello effect from the rolling shutter that's built into these cameras. The way that you fix that is in DaVinci Resolve, go to Stabilization, Stabilize. Select camera gyro, set the strength to zero, hit apply, you get a tiny bit of a crop, but look at the difference that it makes. The next feature is also shared between the new full frame camera and the Pocket 6K Pro, and that's the monitor. I don't need an external monitor because the monitor is big enough that I can see everything. I have the false color guide that helps me with exposure. Everything is accessible through the back screen. Changing your ISO, changing shutter speed, white balance, grids, de-squeezing for anamorphic, the histogram, everything is right there. It's a very easy to use, accessible monitor. And the last thing that I'm gonna say about this camera that makes it unique is the image quality that you get with this. I love the colors, I love the image that it produces. Being able to produce an image that looks lifelike or almost video-like quality, which in some cases with clients, they want something like that. They don't want something cinematic. They don't want something with a particular cast to it. But it's also good to have that flexibility to apply 
a grade to something, whether it's throwing on a specific LUT, if you want to create a green cast or a purple cast, if you want to apply a film look and film grain using something like Dehancer, the image that it's recording retains so much information that it's easier to push a specific look to that image. And that's what's important because you get it right in camera and then you have the flexibility to make it look lifelike, dreamlike, apply whatever color grade or look you want to it in the end. Uh, I've been shooting with Black Magics for a while. Uh, I started on a Canon, graduated to the production 4K, which I still use. It's still running. It's still a beast. Got the 6K Pro, used that for a year and a half. And the only reason I got rid of that was to upgrade to the full frame. That was something that was important to me. And I feel like I'm using new lenses now because the lenses that I used for the last eight years on the Super 35 are now translating to the full frame and I'm getting, yeah, seems like there's new lenses. So thank you so much for watching everybody. If you're using this camera, I'd love to know what you like about it, what you don't like about it, what are your thoughts and uh, leave me a comment. I will respond to it. Thank you so much, everybody. Peace.